Okay, in, in Connect, we're going to start off with uh, Chapter 5, and we're going to go right into Number 2, where we actually work on some FIFO, LIFO average costs, and in this case, they're throwing in um, specific ID as well. Specific ID is somehow they've marked the items that they're selling, and they know exactly how much they have left of each batch. So I wanted to go through one of these examples and we'll do a couple of them. We'll do like um, the specific ID and maybe FIFO or LIFO and average and do just so you can kind of get a hint of how the program is going to look. So this is very, very similar to what um, we had in our lecture example. Uh, same kind of a layout where we have beginning inventory and then we sell some stuff, buy some stuff, have some sales. All right, so let's um, let's just get right into it. The first one here, it's telling us that we're doing specific ID down here. Right before we get to that, it's telling us for, for specific ID, we have 200 items left in ending inventory, and you could you you could easily figure that up if we were to look at this and just kind of go in order. If we had if we had 140 items in beginning inventory, and then we sold 100. Mental math tells me there's 40 left. And then I bought 60, so now I'm at 100. I'm at 100 items, I sold 80. So now I'm down to 20. And then I just bought 180 before it was all said and done. So I'm at 200 items. And it's saying, okay, of those 200 items, 180 were from our prior purchase. Well, that makes sense because I didn't have a sale afterwards. So yeah, we're going to have all of them. For the specific ID, it's saying five came from the January 20th purchase. So there's five still in this $60 batch. And then there's 15 left from this. So that's how we're going to go about filling in this chart to figure up our cost of goods sold for the specific ID and then we're going to compare them in part three. <clears throat> All right, so for uh, January 1, first thing it we need to put in is the unit cost, so that's easy enough. They were six bucks a piece. And then it's going to be easiest to come over here, I think, to fill in the ending inventory and then work our way back to the middle because it tells us out of those 140 for the specific ID, that there's 15 left. So if I come over here and I put in the 15, it knows that they cost me six bucks a piece. So it's telling me, okay, our ending inventory cost is 90 bucks. And then if I had 140 and I have 15 left, then I just do the mental math to figure up I have 125 that I sold. That's six bucks a piece, so it's telling me my cost of goods sold. Very similar to what we just did in Excel. Same kind of a layout. So you don't need a fancy program. You can do all of this on your own with um, software that you have readily available. All right, so on January 20th, we purchased 60. They cost now only $5, so the price is going down. Remember, we talked about that in the lecture, that when it's uh, FIFO, or no matter what it is, if, it's, if the price is going up, that means your LIFO is going to have a higher cost of goods sold because you're selling those ending items that are higher cost. Well, in this case, the prices are going down. So our FIFO is going to have the higher cost of goods sold, that, and we'll, we'll try to we'll verify that in a little bit. So these are five bucks a piece. And it, it told me in the requirements up here that out of the January 20th, I only have five left in my ending inventory. So I'm gonna put that in first, the five bucks, and five items at five bucks, meaning I sold 55. And then finally of our last purchase, you come up and they cost me $4.50 a piece. So we fill that in. 
And then remember, we just bought these, so I didn't sell anything. So I'm over here, and I have 180 left, all of them, at 450 a piece. All right, so we've got our total cost of goods sold for the specific ID. 1025. We're going to compare that when we get to part three to all all sections, all four sections, to see which one gave us the higher or lower profit in this specific case. All right, this one's laid out just a little bit different when we are, are doing, in this case, uh, requirement two wants us to do the average cost. It says round to two decimal places your cost per unit. So that means this um, right here, the $6. And that's what we had done. That means to the nearest penny. And that's what we did in the Excel example. All right. So on January 10th, we sold items. We sold 100 at 15 bucks a piece. Now, I don't need to put in the sale price. Unlike on my Excel sheet, I had a little, little extra column here for the sale price so we'd remember what it was. This one, they don't, they, you don't need to do that. So we sold 15 items, and the only price that I have of my goods is six bucks each. So that's got to be what I use for my cost of goods sold. And I don't, I didn't put in that number right. It's not 15. It's uh, oh, 100. 100 at 15. So I sold 100 items. I sold them for 15 bucks a piece. Again, it doesn't ask us to put in that information anywhere at this time. And then what I have left, I simply have the 40 items that are left, 140 minus 100, at six bucks each. Now where it gets to be a little bit more difficult is when we come up here and we have a purchase. 60 units at five bucks a piece. So I put in the 60 bucks, put in the 60 items. And they cost me five bucks a piece. So look at, it's actually filling in a lot of this for us. It's saying I have, these 40 have just been brought down. These 60, they're putting it over here in the ending. Um, they're just taking an extra step that we didn't do in Excel. They're just, Instead of doing mental math, 40 plus 60, they're physically putting it over here so you can see it adding up. So there's 100 items, and then they simply want us to put what it is. And so that's where you'll just want to bring up your calculator. $540, and we can do this one in our head, but I'll put it, I'll put it out here. $540 divided by 100 units. So that comes out to be $5.40. Remember, it says round to the second decimal place. So that is my brand new um, average cost. Now, on January 25th, I sell 80 units. Okay. 80 units. And then my average, the cost of those 80 that I'm trying to figure up was $5.40. It does the math for me. That's nice. And so what I have left, I had 100 minus the 80. So I have 20 items. Those 20 items cost $5.40. And our last item, January 30th. I purchased 180 items at 450 a piece. 180 at 450. So what it's doing is it's bringing down this 20, and then doing the mental math. Take the 20 plus the 180. It says, okay, we got a total of 200 items. All of the cost together is 918. So we just bring up the calculator. 918 divided by 200 items is $4.59. Now we could compare between the first two, 1,032 cost of goods sold and 1,025. So right now, the one that's gonna give us 
one that has the higher cost of goods sold is the average cost, not by much, seven bucks. If it has a higher cost of goods sold, that means it's gonna have a lower income or gross profit. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and finish out and do the other two. So then we can answer the questions that are in part three. Because if you don't have these done, then you can't answer the questions in part three. So I'm gonna go through a little bit quicker on these, uh, especially on the LIFO and the last one. I'll kind of talk through a little bit on the FIFO. All right, so on January 10th, we sold 100 items. Cost has to be the six, that's all we have. And so I have left 40 items. On January 20th, I got 60 items at five bucks a piece. Oh, sorry. Yep. 60, 60 units at five bucks a piece. So it's saying, okay, what do we, what do we need to do? We actually need to fill this in on the average cost that filled it in for us. So we have 40 still at six bucks a piece. We now have 60 at five bucks a piece. It went ahead and added it for us. We don't need to do that. That's not essential in uh, FIFO. <clears throat> now on January 25th, I'm making a sale of 80 units. So using FIFO, that means I'm selling all of these at six bucks a piece. And then if I'm selling 80 units, that means I'm selling 40 more of this lower priced item. And then what I have left, I have zero of these and 60 minus the 40, I have 20 items left of that one. And now on the 30th, the only thing we had here is we had a purchase of 180 at $4.50. So we can start filling in our ending inventory. We had zero at six bucks still. We have 20 at five bucks and we have 180. 450. Okay, we can go ahead and go to our last requirement. January 1st, already filled in, 140 items. We're ready for January 10th. We sell 100 units. So if I sell 100, they have to be at this price because that's all I have. So six bucks. I have 40 left. And then I make a purchase on January 20th. 60 items at 50 bucks. 50, but five. So I come over here, I still have the 40 items at $6. I have these 60 at $5. January 25th, I make a sale, 80 units. This time I'm selling uh, from the bottom first. So out of the 80, I'm selling, uh, I'm selling all 60 of these guys. That means only 20 at this price. So what I have left is I have 20 items at the six bucks and nothing at the $5. And finally, simply come down here. We bought another 180. Remember they cost me 450. Six bucks, I still have those 20 of those opening inventories. And like I said in the lecture, unless I ever completely run out of inventory, I'm always gonna have something at the six bucks range just because the, they are gonna be the last ones to ever sell. These guys are gone. I could take them out, there's no need. The software puts it in there because it wants to make sure you understand that. But if you were doing this in real, you wouldn't keep that zero at $5. And then we have the 180 that we just bought. 
Okay, now what you may want to do, instead of flipping back and forth all the time, write down the gross profit of these. So we had, I'll just do them in backwards order. LIFO cost of goods sold was 1,020. And ending inventory, probably we'll need that. I'm, I can't remember, it was 930, but we'll put it in. To help us to answer the questions. Remember, the higher the cost of goods sold, the lower the uh, gross profit. So if we were this one, I'm gonna highlight this one. This one is our highest. This one is our lowest. Right, we should be able to answer the questions now for part three. Oh, this wasn't the one I was thinking. That's okay. We can fill in this. <coughs> oh, yeah, the questions are down here. Okay. So it's it's not thinking that we, it's good that we did this. So we um, put some of these numbers out here. We don't have to keep flipping back. So when we fill in this income statement, uh, the uh, the sales, the sales out here, we sold 180 units, and both times they cost 15. So I can just take the 180 times 15 to see that I sold 2,700 dollars worth. And the program knows that once they put that in, I thought it would. The sales are going to go the same. Some of the problems. They do that, they actually do that, for whatever reason on this one, it's not set up like that. The sales don't change. Our sales number, the only thing that changes is the cost of goods sold. Now I can start entering in the cost of goods sold. Specific ID was 1,025. And then average cost was 1,032. Cost of sold. IFO was 1,040 and then 1,020. Keeping track of our running uh, gross profit. It's telling us here that assume that we had 1,250 of expenses. Doesn't matter which method I use, I'm still gonna have the same electric bill, same uh, rent expense. So we could just put in at 1,250 all the way across the board. And then finally, it's saying whatever our income is, we want to take 40%. That's a pretty high amount. That's an old, old, old amount. The new tax law is taking that down. Uh, we're at 40%, though, on this one. So 40% of 425. Is 170 of income tax. That's a big chunk. 418 at 40%. 167.2. 410 at 40. 164. And finally, 430 at 40%. 172. Okay, we can now answer these questions with method, which method yields the highest net income. I just simply look down here and it's still the LIFO, like what I had put in my Excel sheet. The, the LIFO has the lowest cost of goods sold. So if it's the lowest expense, it's gonna be the highest income. If everything else is the same, and it is. So the highest net income is LIFO. Does does net income using weighted average fall between FIFO and LIFO? And it does. 251 is in between the 246 and 258. So yes. If costs were rising instead of falling, which method would yield the highest net income? Well, we had talked about that and it's gonna be just the flipped. It's gonna be the other one. It's gonna be FIFO when prices are rising. All right, let's go ahead and check the work. And you can see we got everything right and all the income statement correct. Okay, what this one is, 
this one I didn't have in my notes because it's it's pretty easy just to talk about and explain. When you have inventory on your books, and if that inventory you bought it for fifty bucks a piece, but if the inventory either becomes outdated because newer technology is coming in, think of like if I'm still have on my books a VCR, and that VCR back in 1985, well it cost a lot of money. It was 100 bucks. Now a VCR is going to be about three dollars. So I don't want to keep it on my books for a hundred because that's overinflating my assets. That VCR does not, will not get me a hundred bucks or more than that, hopefully. So you always got to value your inventory at either A, what you bought it for, or the lower of A, or what is it worth right now. And so that's all that this is going to be doing. And we'll just do a couple examples. So with the helmets, it's saying, okay, total cost. If I have 24 items and they cost me 50 bucks a piece, that's uh, $1,200. Whereas the market right now, I can sell them for $54. So that's not much mark. That's not much of a markup, but at least it's better than what I bought it for. It's at $1,296. So the lower of cost to market is simply the $1,200. I can keep the inventory at what it currently is, 50 bucks. I don't need to make a change. Now, when I come over to the bats though, the bats are a different story. Bats, I have 17 bats and I bought them for 78 bucks. So it cost me 13.26, that's what they're on my books for. But really, if I was, I couldn't even sell them, not let alone for a markup like 80 bucks, I couldn't even sell them for what I bought them for. So they're only selling right now for $72, $12.24. So I have to mark down my inventory, take inventory away cost wise for the difference and show that I need to use the lower of cost or market. So I basically lost $102 of value of my inventory. And I know I didn't do them all, but we'll just show that these two do look correct. And you're going to do the same for the other two. So it's not that difficult to do lower of cost from market.